What is going on, Jet fans? Training camp, full swing, and you might have lost track of who some of these players are on the bottom parts of our roster competing for spots. So I'm going to touch on every single player on the 90 man, uh, at least to some extent here. Also going to give uh, where it applies for each room, a potential surprise cut, a potential dark horse to make the roster, and a breakout uh, candidate. Shout out to Dennis Wazek Jr., uh, I cropped these from his tweets. He's one of the best follows in terms of recapping training camp covering the New York Jets. So let's start with the quarterback position. No surprises here. Uh, I I would call Zach Wilson the surprise cut, but it's not going to do that. Um, contractually, it makes no sense. Don't think he has much trade value. So uh, I think the Jet fans who think he's going to take over after Aaron Rodgers uh, and be the franchise guy or the Jet fans who think he's the worst quarterback in the history of the world. I think we could probably meet somewhere in the middle and hope that he's a competent backup, uh, at least for this year. And then we'll see uh, after that. Now, between Tim Boyle and Streveler, I think. And by the way, I don't view Tim Boyle as legitimate quarterback to competition. Uh, now, again, grain of salt. I have not watched a lot of Tim Boyle, but he has three touchdowns to eight interceptions. His interception percentage is seven percent. Yards per attempt, 5.4. So for their career, when a ball leaves Zach Wilson's hand, it on average is going to gain one more yard and is two and a half times less likely to be intercepted than a ball that leaves Tim Boyle's hand. So Tim Boyle, QB3 might be a little high for him. This is a practice squad level guy uh, who might stick around if they use that that rule where you can have an emergency third quarterback. Uh, but I think Tim Boyle will get the nod just because of the system familiarity he has with Nathaniel Hackett. When you bring in Streveler, you kind of have to change your whole offense. Although to be honest, you know, gun to my head, if I had to win a game, I'd rather have Chris Streveler running around out there than Tim Boyle. But Streveler is probably the odd man out. Probably can get him back on the practice squad. Uh, so no real surprises there. Next running back. Uh, I will say the surprise cut would be Zonovan Knight. Now, if the running back room stands right now, I, I do think he will make it. But if the Jets are to bring in another veteran running back, I do think Bam Knight could be uh, released and then try to be retained in the practice squad. At this point, with Dalvin Cook maybe seeming less likely, and if they're not going to go for Kareem Hunt, I don't think there's any other running backs on the market I would rather have than Bam Knight. I wouldn't want to bring in the ghost of Ezekiel Elliott or Leonard Fournette um, and then cut Bam Knight. Uh, to be honest, that I don't think that's worth it. Uh, a surprise guy to crack the roster, I guess, would be Travis Dye, who is an undrafted free agent out of USC, who does have a more third down back kind of skill set. Uh, apparently, uh, within the first two days of practice, for however much weight that carries, has been showing some nice hands uh, out of the backfield. And then uh, we know Izzy uh, is going to be slotted as a lock to make the team. And De Demaria Crockett, who the Jets just signed yesterday, uh, I would consider him to have no shot to make the roster. All due respect, he's got three carries in his career, and he is just a year removed from an ACL tear uh, himself. Nick Bowden's an interesting one, man. Uh, Nick Bowden was getting some early run with the in the install with the first team, which it doesn't mean nothing to me. You know, if. NFL teams carried 58, 60 players on their roster. Nick Bowden would be a lock to me. I think this team wants a fullback. Uh, it's just really tough when you get down to, are you cutting uh, uh, an extra defensive lineman or, or your fourth tight end or where are you finding the room for that? So what teams, a lot of teams do is they find uh, a tight end or even like the Rams have Ben Skoranek who does that as a wide receiver. But I would love to have Nick Bowden on this team. The back end of, 2021 he was a difference maker in the run game uh not really a fullback you're going to hand the ball off to but did he had one catch and i believe it was a 20 yard touchdown so that's something to keep an eye on are both hackett uh and the coaches from tennessee uh lean more 12 and 21 personnel heavy they like a physical style of football so nick Bowden is a name to keep an eye on for sure uh let's move on to wide receiver and tight end in the wide receiver room, uh, my surprise cut would be Randall Cobb. Again, I'm not predicting that, but that is the only cut I could that's possible that would be the biggest surprise. So the locks, obviously, Garrett Wilson, Corey Davis, Alan Lazard, uh, Miko Hardman, in my opinion, are all pretty much locks. Um, Corey Davis, you could argue maybe he could be cut for financial reasons, but 
he's definitely one of your top three or four most talented receivers. Randall Cobb's contract is written in a way where you can get out of it for pretty much free. But I, I think it's just part of the understanding that he's kind of, he's a little bit of part of the Rogers package deal is what it is there. A surprise guy to make the team for me would be Xavier Gibson, who I think does have the most special teams upside of all the undrafted free agents. He's the most accomplished returner. I think he's more athletic than guys like TJ Luther. So that would be the surprise name to me. A breakout player? Uh, yeah, I'm going Corey Davis, man, until I die. I might as well be his agent as, at this point. So you just know he's going to have a killer drop the first drive of the season, and everyone's going to be uh, crucifying me. So come on, Corey. I'm in your corner. Don't make me look dumb, brother. Uh, to touch on some guys that you may not know their names, a lot of bodies here. So I broke them up into kind of different tiers of player that are competing for this wide receiver six spot. We have Malik Taylor and Alex Erickson, who are two veterans who – are very low end receivers uh, have experience doing that and special teamers. They're kind of Jeff Smith level players where, yeah, they can play receiver in a system. You hope to never really see them at receiver and uh, they're special teamers who can do some receiver kind of stuff. That's the way I see those two guys uh, as veterans. Now the other tier is undrafted free agents who are really special teams, heavy players prior uh, primarily. And that is Gibson and Luther Gibson. I touched on as a, the dark horse to make the team Luther who, and I don't, I'm not rolling the film on all of these uh, fringe roster guys here. So some of this is casual information, uh, full transparency, but TJ Luther, they did give the biggest guarantee to any undrafted free agent in team history. So that is part of it. You have to figure he's at least a lock to make the practice squad. But the two guys who excite me the most are Jerome Cap and Jason Brownlee. Uh, I think those are the two players where I, I could see as developmental guys to uh, maybe compete to be one of your top four receivers, right? We have Corey Davis and Michael Hardman are on one-year deals. So you'd hope we'd have a pipeline where some of these guys can uh, be actually starting receivers at some point. And if I had to point to two guys, it would be those two. Irv Charles was here last year. Uh, I, I guess you'd consider him in that tier, although I'm not as excited about him. He did get hurt yesterday. He's a bigger body receiver who can do some special team stuff as well. So really, it's going to come down to what do the Jets value? Do they do they really want to go with just a pure special teamer like Xavier Gibson? Or um, can Jerome Cap and Jason Brownlee impress enough with their wide receiver potential that the Jets keep them just to lock them down as a developmental player and maybe deal with a trade off of a little bit less on special teams. I hope the Jets go with one of these UDFAs uh, with Cap or Brownlee or even Irv Charles rather than one of the veterans like Taylor or Erickson, but we'll see how it plays out. Not a huge deal either way. Uh, tight end. My surprise uh, cut would be Zach Kuntz uh, because I think it happens every year, right? The the sixth or seventh round pick the, or the undrafted free agent we all fall in love with uh, who's super athletic and they get cut and we're like, no, oh my goodness. And Jets Twitter is going to melt down. We're never going to get him back. And then most likely you do get him back on the practice squad. Uh, pretty much all the players who've panicked about that, we've been able to get back. And with Koontz, uh, I kind of relate it back to some of these wide receivers like Brownlee and Charles. I think it's going to come down to can Koontz do enough in – the training camp and preseason period where the jets give him a roster spot solely uh, because of his potential as a developmental tight end, because it's not going to be for his immediate impact. In my opinion, watching Zach Koontz and looking at how this roster is constructed, I don't really see a single thing that he can do uh, for this team right now to contribute right away. He can't block at all. That's probably never going to be his game. And even, you know, all right, you know, jump ball stuff. He's six, seven, put him in there in the red zone. You know, you're not putting Zach Koontz in a red zone package over Garrett Wilson, over Corey Davis, over Alan Lazard, over Michael Hardman, over uh, Tyler Conklin, over CJ Ozama, over Jeremy Ruckert, over like I'm just talking about in terms of weapons, like there's 11, 12 weapons that you would trust more to be able to get open and catch the ball. Randall Cobb. I would trust Randall Cobb to, uh, uh, you know, on a, to get run a five yard out <laughs> or a five yard slant and catch the ball uh, more than a Zach Koontz fade ball or whatever. So I just don't see that. So can you get him on field goal block 
and lock him down a, as a potential developmental player. Now, Kenny Yaboa plays every special teams rep. So that's really what it's going to come down to for a tight end for, to me, a surprise to make the team would be EJ Jenkins, who is an undrafted free agent tight end as well. Six foot six, two forty five. So, you know, Koontz is such a more recognizable name, but at the end of the day, EJ Jenkins was an undrafted free agent priority guy for them. And Koontz was a seventh round pick. So the jets cl clearly didn't really see much of a difference between those two guys. If they did, they would have taken Koontz in the fourth or fifth round. So if the Jets want to go with one of these developmental big slot tight ends, could it be EJ Jenkins over Zach Koontz? It could. I haven't watched EJ Jenkins play, uh, so it's totally possible. In terms of a breakout player, I got to go Jeremy Ruckert. It's it's a hundred percent projection. I understand that, but I do think that I do think he has the potential to be the most well-rounded tight end on this team, you know, considering blocking, and he's got enough juice to go up the seam and make some nice catches and stress the field that way. I think towards the end of this year, maybe you see him usurp CJ Uzama in that second tight end blocking role. And then really in 2024, I think he cements himself as uh, one of your top two tight ends along with Tyler Conklin. And then maybe CJ Uzama is kind of an overpaid tight end three who's great in the locker room. And that's just fine. That's how I see it shaking out at tight end. All right, let's go to the offensive line. Uh, a surprise guy to be cut. I really couldn't think of one. Uh, the closest guy I could I could give is Wes Schweitzer. Um, but contractually, I think he's going to be here. The Jets gave him a two-year deal. They'd be out at $3 million. Don't think it's worth it. I was His tape was pretty brutal to me last year. Uh, his pass protection was horrible. Now, there could be lots of context if I followed uh, the commanders closely that I'm missing as to why he had a down year. I, I, I totally understand that. But all I'm saying is when I watched the all 22 in my dark room with no sound on, uh, he was getting his ass kicked. It is what it is. Uh, there was some Greg Van Roe in level bad pass protection with Switcher. So uh, if he's out uh, on the on the flip side, I really like the tape. I saw with Tristan Castillo Cologne, particularly at center. Uh, it's been a while, but I, I believe that he played center in 2021 and then guard in 2022. Now it's a small sample size. You're talking like 200 reps for his career, but I like that kid a lot. And if I had to pick which one could be on the team, Schweitzer or Cologne, I would go Cologne, but the financial investment tells me Schweitzer. So I'll just have to assume that Joe Douglas knows more about football than I do. And, uh, just roll with that. Um, and let's just, kind of break down some of these players that you may not know into some different tiers so we talked about uh cologne who's a who's a dark horse and then yandi kajust is a complete reclamation project who is pretty bad from the patriots last year but he does have a third round draft pedigree maybe they could make something out of him brett lang is an undrafted free agent and then the rest of these guys that you don't know or you may not know or be as familiar with uh panky sanat Glasser, they are all respectfully guys you do not want to see on the field at all. Those are the kind of guys where you're calling up the Houston Texans practice squad and saying, can I get Cedric uh, Agwehi on the team instead of them? Uh, so, and the rest of the guys are locks. Carter Warren's a lock, Lakin's a lock, Connor, uh, McGovern, Becton, Mitchell, Vera Tucker, and Billy Turner are all uh, locks in my opinion. So, Switcher and Cologne is one thing to keep an eye on. And we'll see if maybe the Jets can mold something out of Yandi Kajust. And heading over to the defensive side of the football, we'll head to the trenches. Defensive line, a surprise dark horse to make the team, I think is Tanzel Smart. Uh, I think every time I see him play in the preseason, he's killing it. He does remind me of a diet Sheldon Rankins. He's a little, uh, doesn't have the prototypical body you'd like to see. In a defensive lineman, doesn't look like Tarzan getting off the bus. I understand that, but he's got some wiggle to him, man. He's got a nice bag. He's got a spin move that's been on display each of the last two preseasons. And the counterpart to that with a surprise cut would be Solomon Thomas. And I think Solomon Thomas and Tanzel Smart are both just as meh as your fourth defensive tackle. And Solomon Thomas would be a lot more expensive. But Solly Thomas is a, is a solid guy, and you know there's a human component to it. So... If Solly Thomas is the guy, that's not a big deal. But I do think Tanzel Smart could be just as good. 
breakout player for me has to be Jermaine Johnson. I think you could see him getting a 20% increase in, in snap percentage share, getting five or six sacks, still being dominant against the run. You know, if you took Jermaine Johnson this year's version of him and you put him on the 2019 Jets, he's probably leading that team in sacks and playing 70% of the snaps, but he's just a victim of a really good problem for the Jets of the deep room. Um, now, I would consider the locks to be uh, Quinnen, Lawson, JFM, uh, Jermaine, Clemens, Quentin Jefferson, Huff, and Al Woods are all locks in my opinion. Afidi Odenigbo is a player we just signed yesterday who had a really impressive season uh, two years ago, or, or last year rather. He had four sacks in 100 pass rush reps, which is a really impressive sack rate. Uh, my hunch is that that was a little bit of an outlier. And maybe if we watched him, some of those sacks would be kind of lucky sacks because uh, I, I don't know, or maybe it's just a diamond in the rough that we got uh, in the fifth wave of free agency, but not exactly holding my breath on that. Although, you know, the numbers are there. He did produce Marquis Spencer is a camp body. All due respect. He's not really a rosterable defensive tackle. Isaiah Mack is interesting because I think he would be the guy that they would call up. He's from Baltimore. We got him last year off their practice squad. Um, he'd be the guy they'd call up if Al Woods were to have to miss a game because he does have that prototypical one tech build. He's like 6'1", 310. Uh, and Deslin Alexandre is an undrafted free agent from Pitt who I think can eventually do some of the stuff Michael Clemens does on this roster inside outside. He lined up all across the formation at Pitt and uh, but practice squad i think this year for him and then next year when we have some turnover maybe he can compete for a spot will mcdonald obviously is a lock as well I forgot to mention him let's head to the secondary and then we'll round it off with linebacker and special teams corner a surprise guy to make the team for me would be craig james and that's because he does exactly what james uh, or Justin Hardy does, which would be my surprise cut. Again, I'm not predicting Justin Hardy would be cut. That's why I said it's a surprise cut. Uh, he's a captain. Boyer loves him. But just financially, if you can get 80% of the gunner uh, that Justin Hardy is for one third of the price uh, with Craig James, is that something that the Jets would do considering neither James or Hardy are guys you really want to play corner uh, at all? A breakout candidate for me is, is Brandon Eccles. Now, you don't want him to be because you don't want him to ever play. You want Reed and Sauce to be healthy. But I do think Brandon Eccles could be an average starting outside corner on a lot of teams. But he's in the one of the best, if not the best, cornerback room in the NFL. Really like Brandon Eccles. Uh, now, some players you may not be as familiar with. Uh, I talked about uh, James. He could be a hardy replacement. Uh, Jimmy Moreland is, is a veteran and then Langford is an undrafted free agent, but I view both of those guys as potential competition to Bryce Hall, who I think is better than them, but is set to make $3 million. And at what point is cornerback number five, not worth that to you? And do you want to go with these, one of the other guys? Moreland has over you know 20 starts in his career. So maybe they go with the experienced guy. Langford is also six, two and two Oh five. So he kind of has that Bryce Hall style build Javelin Gidry. Uh, is the only guy here who in the cornerback room, at least that has backup slot experience. Now he wasn't very good when he was with the jets, but I don't think he was horrible. He was all right. A freak athlete. And he's probably just as good, if not better than most backup slot corners in the NFL. If he's your backup slot corner, that's just fine. Uh, it just depends if they want to designate a roster spot to backup slot, or if they want to kind of have maybe Tony Adams, see the backup slot or another safety we'll get to in a minute. And I also th always thought that he should have, when I watched him play, I always thought, man, that guy should be a really good special teamer. Hasn't worked out. I don't know if we can mold him into that. Dude's got Olympic track speed, and he's, <laughs> he hits hard too. I, I like the way he plays, man. It seems like he should be a really good gunner, but uh, is what it is. Moving on to safety, a surprise cut. It shouldn't be a surprise, but it will be Ashton Davis just because it seems like every year we've done this and he's made it, you know, the past two or three years. 
but I do think just like with Bryce Hall, this is where the rubber meets the road because with these non first round picks, the fourth year is almost a glorified fourth year option because the pay scale escalates their, their cap hit jumps up in that fourth year and teams can get out of it scot-free. So really when you sign a contract as a non first round pick, you're signing a three year deal with a, uh, an inflated fourth year option. And Ashton Davis, he did turn himself into a core special teamer last year, playing 75% of the snaps. But at what point is safety four and special teamer not worth $4 million when maybe you can get that out of a vet minimum guy? Uh, a dark horse to make the team is a guy we just signed in Dane Cruikshank because I he can do, he can be corner four, or I'm sorry, he could be safety four. He has special teams experience. And he can do a little bit of nickel backing. So if they don't keep Gidry, can Dane Cruikshank be your fourth safety, your emergency nickel, and a special teamer for half the price of Ashton Davis? That's something you definitely would have to consider. The breakout player for me, you know, I'm a Tony Adams truther through and through. Uh, I think by at least 2024, uh, he will be the starting free safety for the New York Jets which makes sense. That's an election year. He's got a presidential name, but uh, he's got a chance to start this year as well. Um, some other guys, you may not know what well, Jarek Bernard Converse. I, I, he definitely has a shot just because of draft pedigree. Uh, the injury sh- shouldn't put him behind too far, uh, but it does look like they're going to list him as a safety. So there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of bodies for this fourth safety spot. It could go a lot of different ways. Uh, Trey Dean and Marquise Waters to me are both they're both tweeners between linebacker and safety, and they rub me as the Hamza and Sherwood style picks where they're kind of box safety linebacker kind of players. And especially Waters, who is 218. Trey Dean, his play style reminds me so much of Sherwood when I watch him, but he's only 205. I don't know if he has the frame to ever make a full time transition. So He's just kind of a player who's in between. I just don't see him as a full-time linebacker or safety in the NFL. Although I really like the person. I really like the player. So trading is going to have to be an absolute dog on special teams to have a shot. Uh, But practice squad, always an option for all those guys as well. Let's round it off with linebackers and the special teamers. At linebacker, uh, my... And not a ton of surprises here, but I guess my surprise cut would be uh, Zaire Barnes not making it. Now, your draft status always helps. Typically, if your picks one through five, you're pretty much a lock. But six and seven, sometimes teams will you know will cut you and try and bring you back on the practice squad. So that'd be the surprise there. And the surprise in at the linebacker spot would be Caleb Johnson, just because he's the only one of some of these undrafted free agents that I knew before the draft and I watched, and he is freakishly fast. Uh, four, three, nine, 40 yards, and all of these guys, uh, so Zaire Barnes, uh, Cherilis, Hall, Johnson, all these, uh, the six-round pick, and then the three undrafted free agents, when you look up their scouting report, it's it's clones. It's 6'2", 235, really fast. Uh, but raw all over, right? They're all Quincy Williams, <laughs> right? And we're trying to take what we had in Quincy Williams, who was an, uh, you know, kind of an unheralded player, plucked him off waivers and turned him into an average starter. And I think Robert Sala is going to try and find that magic somewhere here um, with, with those four guys. And then Chaz Surratt is a, well, he just has a great name. And uh, he is a former quarterback turned linebacker that just hasn't been able to stay healthy and I don't think is really seriously in the competition. I would give um, Zaire Barnes the the leg there. Hamza Nazaldin just seems like he's destined to be a, kind of a career practice squad, um, fringe roster bubble kind of guy, just like Marcel Harris was for Sala for many years there. Special teams, we know who these guys are, uh, but I'll, I'll go through quickly what was noted as who was uh, returning kicks. The other day, so the Jets had Miko Hardman, Izzy Abanacanda, Travis Dye, Xavier Gibson, and Alex Erickson all working as kick. Oh, and Bam Knight uh, as kick and punt returners. So like a five or six man competition 
there. I did note that Gibson, I think, has the most juice of the undrafted free agents as a returner. The Jets did lose defensive end Bradley and I, Chuck Clark, uh, safety and wide receiver Deontay Spencer to IR, which explains the signing of uh, an Indegbo, Erickson, and um, all these names. Dane Cruikshank. Jeez. <laughs> all right. There it is. There's an 90-man roster. I'm sure it'll be different uh, in 24 hours after uploading this, but hope you got something out of it, and we'll talk all soon.